Yeah, I, I'd uh, like to tell you about it. It's a, uh, a fractured bone in his neck. And it's interesting because looking at the, in, looking at the incident, he got crunched and come off with a very stiff neck and uh, but said he was okay and I think we kept him off the rest of the day anyway but it was late it was in the last quarter and his neck was still stiff so they got it checked out and sure enough there's a, a, a fracture in it so I, I guess any fracture around the neck is is bad now how bad simply means he's going to be in a brace for eight weeks and it's a pretty solid brace it's from here right through to his chest so into his chest so um, was he lucky? I guess anyone who gets hit here through and feels a, a crunch or a crack is lucky. So I, I just I think it's what it what it does to me. It really reinforces how important the acknowledgement of the league and their ruling on keeping the head and the neck area protected as best we possibly can is is reinforcement by the rules and and. And I just think that sometimes we are a little bit, um, uh, we take it for granted that, that uh, you know, these strong young men running around, that nothing can happen to them. And uh, we've already seen with a young, young bloke down at Geelong, broke his neck, he's a, got a young family and so forth. So it's, you know, these are the sort of injuries that we, we dread. Simon's semi-lucky, I guess. You could say that it could have been worse, but... Fortunately, in a, in a club environment like this, we're able to look at it and get him right. He'll be right for next year, but he won't be playing for the, for the rest of this year, which is a real shame because he's, uh, he's a player that uh, has come off a couple of bad injuries and we've cemented him into the side now, And uh, albeit that he'd been in the, in the reserves. He was due to come back this week. Um, but, but he, he could say, well, over the next eight weeks, I can now think about what could have happened and now get right for next year. Yeah, I did. Yes, maybe this morning. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he's very disappointed he's not playing. I think it's too early to say that he's looking at and going, what could have been? So I think it's going to take a couple of, You know, I want to involve him at the football club in a manner of... Even though he has played a lot of games, he's a senior player. So we'll, we'll involve him in, in the club, but whether it be with the reserves or, or the seniors in some capacity over the next few weeks. But I think the first thing that he'll do is, is uh, come to grips with the injury and then we'll give him an opportunity to go home. He's a Western Australian boy. And then come back and, and, and uh, get involved again. We just, I don't want to make it too dramatic, but what it, what it is, it's reinforcement of the rule and thankfully, it's at the AFL, and that hopefully will filter down very strongly through football played underneath that. Just, it's not a Mickey Mouse rule. It's a rule that's there for the safety of players. And I think it's just a real reminder of how, how fragile sometimes, as I said before, we, we think we're big and strong, and you see the players, they do weights, and they've, and they've and they've got size about them. He's not, he's not a young kid. He's got some good size about him. Hitting the wrong area, wrong time, then these things can be very, very uh, uh, poor prognosis. But in this case, you know, he's going to come up OK. But the most important thing to me out of this is his safety, and the second part is the, the reinforcement of the AFL's rule. I think it's, it's one of those ones that's a beauty. No, no, and he, was, he was already on the ground, I think. You know, it's, it's sort of like a bit vague, but... He, got, he got, uh, was holding the ball, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> so he lost, he lost the ball. But I, don't think, I think that's the least of his worry about getting free kicked for holding the ball.